there's been a lot of movies we've seen. What's the real famous one where they take on the, the bodies? Avatar. Avatar. It's kind of like along the lines of Avatar where, where you have an Avatar body. You could imagine like if there was an Avatar Nicholas or an Avatar Jeff or an Avatar, like if we each had our own Avatar bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and that basically we acted and reacted and interacted with each other and with the world through the Avatar bodies. And then if you take it a step back and you think of the body that seems to be your body, it's just an avatar body. Like there's a mind behind this body. It's not really this autonomous thing. It just thinks and acts and says things and does things. Every time we get angry though, we believe that the avatars are real. When you're acting, when you're acting and reacting towards a brother or a sister mm -hmm. with anger, then you better believe you believe that these avatar bodies are actually real. And they they're, have nothing to do with your mind. <laughs> They've gone berserk. <laughs> They've gone berserk. <laughs> and they're doing things that are not agreeable. But, but, if we could come back with care and gentleness and say, Oh, the problem's not the body and the problem's not the behaviors, because the behaviors are just acting out what's going on in the mind. It's the attack thoughts in the mind that are wreaking havoc. We can't blame the avatar bodies. And in this movie it's so great because this is surrogate classic Bruce Willis movie. We just wanted something. We started off looking at Christmas movies and something with snow and this and this and then we find, finally we were like, oh we want something really juicy. That's what we all want anyway. We want juicy movies. We want to kind of go, after you get done you go off to go to your room. You go, oh, oh, oh. you know, it's got you, Jesus has got your attention. You go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is really good because the characters in this movie seem to, this has evolved into the future where robots, robotics have evolved so that the robots don't look like robots anymore. <laughs> you can't tell the difference, like in Simone. No one can tell that Simone was a generated character. Everyone, except Al Pacino, the character who, who was doing it, everyone else thought she was a real actress. Even though she was a factor, she was a virtual actress. Well, the clones are so good, the robots are so good that they look and interact like real people. Now you're getting into some cool virtual reality movies because you can, you can see that, that really what's going on, there's, there's issues that are much deeper than what's happening with, with the clones, with the surrogates. And I think what the value of that is, is when we bring it back to our community, it's, it's easy to get tricked into believing that the surrogates, these bodies are just surrogates. Mm. They're nothing more than surrogates. They weren't created by God. These are like puppets that are getting used by the mind. And then when you start to find yourself feeling upset, angry, irritable, whatever, it's because there's an internal conflict going on that's not being addressed and then it's put out onto the surrogates. And so as this movie goes along, you can start to see the desensitization, desensitization and everything that comes along and I think the way the whole movie goes, uh, yeah the first time I saw it I just thought how delightful to have a movie like this. This is what I think Lisa was searching for when we watched under the skin. She was searching for something like this, hoping, <laughs> hoping for something like this. <laughs> and so we get to do it. So I think we'll have a good discussion. But I just, I want you to be aware as we watch the movie about uh, what we talk about, about where the conflict is. Because as long as the conflict is not addressed where the conflict is, which is in the mind, then it's just going to be, you know, acted out and played out in surrogates over and over and over. And that's what keeps the, the frustration going, the anger going, is by seeing it where it's not. Mm. And trying to deal with it yeah. where it's not. <laughs> like when they invented television and they used to have these, these things that would go wrong with the network broadcasting, they would have to broadcast to all the people, don't touch your dial. Mm. The problem is not in your set. Because people would be watching something and I Love Lucy or 
you know, one of these great sh Sid Caesar show of shows, MG Coca, in the early days of television, and then all of a sudden the picture would have these crazy things going on, and they would start going at their TVs to try to, Adjust thinking for dial. sure, and then this voice would come across, don't touch the set, don't touch the dial, the problem is not in your set, in your TV set. Which is great, because imagine if every time you got angry, you had like a little Jesus doll on your shoulder, and like, <laughs> don't touch the projection. Right. The problem is not in the projection. Smack the, the problem is that you are projecting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the projection, it's that you are projecting, you know. And if we had a little doll That's that was awesome. telling us, you know, every time, that would get your attention. As soon as you started to get angry, you'd go, oh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, think about that while you're watching this movie. I have to say, this is another one of our classic movies. We, sh we could always watch classic movies. We're always looking for new, 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 new movies. And even the great one is going to break all the blockbusters. Jeff's already come back and said no. No. But this, <laughs> and Nikita was noticing that uh, Transcendence bombed at the box office. Solaris bombed at the box office, and, and Dark City, I swear, when that came out, I went to the theater and I was like, what? And that was gone like in two or three days. They got that thing out of there, out of the movie theaters quickly, because it was too deep. They should have had that movie, and, and then when it closed, they should have had Jack Nicholson come out on public television and go, you can't handle the truth! Because <laughs> the world couldn't handle it. <laughs> Dark City, you know, it was his famous line, was a few good men <laughs> to Tom Cruise, you can't handle the truth, he screams, that's what it is. But this, these kind of movies help us immensely, if we can just remember this throughout the day. Remember, these are your surrogates, and don't put too much pressure on the avatar bodies, <laughs> because they're just following instructions. And even the characters that you are judging are doing things wrong, they're just following the pre-programmed instruction. They're just acting out what you told them to do. Mm. And you should be thanking them for <laughs> acting out so that you can get in touch with your unconscious attack thoughts. Instead, you should be blessing them, you should be thanking them. Mm. You should even be able to have a little session after, oh, I was so upset at you, but yeah, I just good. realized I was upset at me, and I was so angry at mm. what I believed I have made of myself, and it wasn't you, thank you, let me give you a hug for mm. acting that out for me. Because <laughs> I would never have seen that without that Academy Award performance that you did. <laughs> you know, you have to have that gratitude <laughs> For it, because it, you you wouldn't even be aware of it unless they acted it out right. so well. They're your savior. There's, they're your savior in that sense. And these avatar bodies, mm -hmm. we should thank the body. Yeah. That Jesus at one point says, we thank the body for its service. Mm. We thank the body for its service. Mm. We don't go around and tell people what they've done wrong. Mm -hmm. We don't go around pointing out mistakes. We don't go around saying, well, it's all specialness. That's specialness. That's been that's that's a grievance. That's lack. Get over it. That's a grievance. <laughs> we don't do that because why? Because that's not true empathy. Because the whole teachings of the entire course are true empathy. Is see the Christ, see the innocence, overlook the error. And how are you going to overlook the error if you put too much faith in the avatar bodies? If you think they're autonomous, if you think they're acting with minds of their own, and thoughts of their own, and emotions and intentions of their own. There's one part of the Course in the text where Jesus says, it's dangerous to analyze the motives of others, because you cannot do so without engaging the ego. Imagine if you were for, for Christmas, for your New Year's resolution, instead of giving up eating chocolate or something, imagine you were going to have a New Year's resolution where you said, I am going to give up believing that there is such a thing as an error. I'm going to give up error for New Year's. Error. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> That's your New Year's resolution. I will give up error. <laughs> What's that mean? I will give up the belief that there is such a thing as an error. 
That means that any avatar body could ever do anything wrong. That's what your, your, your resolution could be. Because when you spot it, you got it. If you think you see an error, then you must believe in error. How could you even point out an error if you didn't believe in it yourself? But it's so deeply ingrained that we need movies like this to show the avatars kind of acting things out. And, and people, or you could say the mind kind of vicariously using, using a body. In this movie it's even better because they've got, they seem to have their own bodies and their avatar bodies. Mm -hmm. Just like if you have a smartphone, and, but this is like, this is like you have a body and then a clone of a body, but that's still reflecting the mind. It's still all reflecting the mind. Okay, ready? This is exciting. We're in a ship, we're going on a voyage with Bruce Willis. Another classic Bruce Willis film. Bruce. <laughs> go Bruce, go! Bruce, go. <laughs> Unravel these these avatar misperceptions. Show us the way, Bruce.
have been so alive. You have sold Yeah. You're going to love Tosca. All right, but don't tell me how it ends. The way they all end, everyone dies. I'm so glad you could come back east for a visit. Well, anything for a break from exams. We're almost there. Listen, thanks for lending it to me. Have a wonderful time. I love you. I love you too, Dan. That's the inventor of surrogates on the on the speaker. Mm, who we saw his face earlier. He's the inventor. And he's talking to his son. Uh, now, of course, people don't interact with actual people. Mostly, it's just... He's talking to his son's uh, surrogate, mm. so you can interact with surrogates like you would with your son, because people people use ninety eight percent of the people now use surrogates in daily life. Just like when smartphones were invented, you know, a few people got them, but now mm -hmm. they're all over the world. People are using them as interacting. In fact, if you take smartphones and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. The vast majority of the world is now mm -hmm. interacting through surrogates, surrogate phones, oh. and surrogate ways of interacting. Remember, we didn't used to sit there with our little devices. People actually hugged and mm -hmm. kissed and did things, you know, other than just through the devices. But so this is this is the inventor of surrogates is just talking to his son, his son's surrogate, because that's how people relate to each other. This, in this new society. And he said, huh, thank you for letting me borrow it. This yeah. Or lend, lend me this. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Money. Yeah, so his son's kind of going to go to, an, to a place to see something, some kind of an event, you know, and his dad lent him a, like a loaner surrogate. Okay. <coughs> send you surrogate to the dance club. You don't actually go and dance, like the dance party this morning. Isn't that you, the Living Miracle Studio then? <laughs> it's all virtual. You just send your surrogate to dance. You don't have to dance. You just enjoy the dancing. Mm. But you really aren't dancing because the surrogate's mm. dancing. But it's important to remember this at the beginning here, like this is all, these are all surrogates. Mm -hmm. new meaning to acting out fantasies. They're not making out, they're, a they're acting out <laughs> fantasies in the mind. It's a really good movie. Now, what's going to happen, I'll give you a little foreshadowing of the scene. 
because the surrogates, it's all, it's like the way it's, the users are able to just use the surrogates and the, the reason crime has dropped and the reason disease has dropped and tra transmitted diseases and all these things is because they're using surrogates <laughs> and people aren't afraid right. to jump off a balcony or interact or even to send <coughs> surrogates into war. If your surrogate gets shot, you just get yeah, another yeah. surrogate. You don't have a threat. So all those things have dropped. But they've never had the problem where where someone could be a threat to the user through the surrogates, because the surrogates are like the, the actors. It would be like you're on Facebook and you're interacting with somebody and somebody who doesn't like you does more than post a nasty comment on Facebook. They come through the screen on your little iPhone and they electrocute you because they don't like what you're doing on Facebook. Imagine having your little phone and just, ah! Oh, I knew it, this guy didn't like me. And he, I would just, he was posting and everything, but he just... So now we're about to see a scene where it reverses things a bit, where the guy, our young guy that just went in to do the dancing, he's with this blonde woman, and here comes the guy on the motorcycle, and this is going to kind of reverse the... This is where it messes things up, because people are going, using surrogates for safety. And if, if people could get you through the surrogates, mm -hmm. actually, uh, we, we know that's impossible because we're the Christ and, and <laughs> we know there's nothing outside of our minds, so there is nothing that could get us. But this is going to be a scene as if something in the surrogate world could, could get back and affect a user. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Interesting idea. Get lost, meatbag. Surrogate Bruce and his and his surrogate partner are showing up at the scene as they're they're investigating. Bruce, of course, did not go himself, but he sent his surrogate, and she did not go herself. She sent her surrogate, because that's the way it works. They, you know, that's the that's the beauty of this movie is showing how it's all everything's acted out. Getting the black box. Getting the chips completely destroyed. In the airport. We got on the girl. Registered to what Cameron McAllister out of Worcester. Did you follow the report? No, that's just it. No calls, no nothing. Come on. Let's go talk to our operator. That's like an early model. That's a cheap model. That's a cheap early model. Yeah. <laughs> iPhone 4.
Three. Three. <laughs> we have a six plus next to a three. Yeah. Thinking of this crappy loner. Thank you. Loner. Pam? Pam's a Blonde girl. Oh, it's a blonde girl. That's the user. This is the user. That's what we said, or what? Oh, yeah. 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 He looks pretty. He is? Yeah. Yeah, fried. Okay. <laughs> See, remember when they found him laying in the street and their eyes looked like yeah. they were fried? Yeah. Well, the eyes are like the projectors, remember? And so we, we know they're not receivers, they're <coughs> projectors. But so basically, the users are using the surrogates and something's happened with the guy on the motorcycle shot, it's almost like an EMP in uh, Matrix, you know where they have the EMPs that mm -hmm. destroy, what is it that they call the uh, sentinels. sentinels. And so, so they've gone to talk to the user to investigate what's going on and so, you know, the, the users, I've seen things on Facebook where people say, um, like don't, when you're looking for a soulmate, look for the soul in the mate, not for the eye candy. Like don't don't go for the the form of what you think you want as a partner. Go for the soul of what you want as a partner because it's what's underneath. And and basically they've said, you know, if if people could see your minds, you know, could you if you could post your minds online would you really be willing to post what's going on in your mind? Mm -hmm. You know, that's an interesting yes. mm -hmm. thing too. Yeah, for us we're, mm -hmm. we're posting our holiness, but mm -hmm. it's a good thing. So yeah, that's what they've just discovered here, that the user has been fried. <laughs> Through the surrogate. Woo! <laughs> that's turning the whole system upside down. replay of what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's all recorded. How fascinating. Mm -hmm. Now they, they've got this thing to try to solve because this has happened. They just had a, that was the replay, what happened. Time to charge the iPhone. 
There's Bruce. Bruce and Bruce. How's it there? So you have the Bruce not using his surrogate and and his wife is using the surrogate, so she's quite disappointed. Oh, wow. You talk about expectations. She likes the younger yeah. version and so she's where's your like instead of like why aren't you wearing your, your contact lenses or why aren't you wearing your makeup? It's oh boy. You got that model. It's too early this time in the morning to see that. You see the expectations <laughs> that, go, that go on. <laughs> so this is great. This has got all the expectations in there, showing it in a very subtle way, because now we're in their home life. Mm. Now we're right inside their home. It's good. Surrogates to go to Hawaii on a vacation and go scuba diving and do all the things. There. And he he wants them to go take a break. He's he's learned yearning for direct heart to heart connections. Mm. You see, already the beginning of the movie, he's yearning for beyond the surrogates, which is think about it in terms of your own life. You're all yearning to, to have an intimacy of mind, to know one purpose, and these surrogates are being used for other purposes beyond the connecting. And that's where the anger comes up, and that's where the frustration and expectations is, is believing the surrogates can bring you fulfillment. And she's, she's excited about, he says, let's take a break. First she's concerned that he's saying a break in their relationship, and then she's like, he's like, no, vacation, we need to take a vacation. And she's all excited that the surrogates are going to go on a vacation together, and he's like, no, let's us go. And she's like, you got to be kidding. Why am I going to want to spend time with you? You can have more fun with this, our young surrogates. <laughs> you see? It's a really good, this has like a, got a lot of implication. This movie is like rich, rich with starting to have the mind break out of the way it thinks that everything is in the world. It's a great mechanism for breaking out of that mechanism of thinking that this body is who you are. That how, how it acts and reacts and what it does, its conditions, mean something. Because really it's all generated from the mind. And this is, oh, it's a good movie. Isn't that impressed? 
No, he's, he, he wants a heart-to-heart. -heart. He wants to actually talk to her and go off and have, go to Hawaii but have heart-to-heart -heart talks and this and that. And she's really into the surrogates. You know. Oh, I just had a dream. Something like that. I just remember, I just had a dream that someone was telling me how we don't talk anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, that we don't talk, and it's great, but it's just, we don't really, t we don't talk, we never talk. Huh. Yeah, like most conversations in the world are, are much ado about nothing. They're like talking about surrogates. They're not, really communicating. they're not really communicating. You're talking about the past surrogates and the future surrogates. It's you know how it's all about this form stuff, and it's like and people are yearning for like no, be real with me, tell me what's going on. Our expression sessions are an attempt mm -hmm. to go at what Bruce Willis here is wanting. He's wanting more direct contact, direct communication, not the superficial. Okay, we'll have to keep going, otherwise it'll take us till 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it might be worth it though, you might be there. Like, no, 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 let's go till 3! <laughs> what is time? <laughs> What's the better use of time? Right, it's snowing outside, we've got, we're all snowed in and we're watching how to wake up. It's fun. This will go down in your all-time favorite Christmas memories. <laughs> oh, I watched surrogate with a group of people on a bunch of soft chairs. <laughs> 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 Every day's Christmas, so. Mm. Doesn't matter really. We can take a drive out to the cave, we haven't done that before. Can we talk about this another time? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to be busy. Everyone looks for somewhere. Yeah, I was just thinking that um, it just feels like we. I haven't really spent much time together lately. Like, We're together every day. <laughs> Sorry, it's not the same. It's better.
However, a split between Cantor and his BSI partners over the direction of the company led to Cantor's firing seven years ago. Publicly humiliated and forced out of the company he helped to build, Cantor has since remained absent from the public eye. Dr. Cantor is expecting you. He actually lives here? I didn't say that. He'll be speaking with one of his surgeons. I work for Dr. Cantor. It's part of our system. I'm not exactly your average VSI consumer. This was just a way for me to spend time with my son. It's a felony to have a surrogate registered to another operator. No offense, Dr. Kenner. You're just trying to straighten out our facts. What is this? Some kind of good cop, bad cop routine? Yes. You trying to handle me? Yes. Because I'm not going to be handled. Dr. Kenner, I know how you must feel. Do you? Yes, sir. I lost the son myself. Do you have any idea why someone might want to harm Jared? No. Or yourself? They were after. I'm responsible for my son's death. I guess the interview's over. That's how people do. They shut down when they're going through emotional stuff. You know, the surrogates even shut down. So he's he shut his surrogate down because of all that pain of that thought. I might be responsible for my son's death. Just like when you have a, a, a really dark thought and the body seems to be disabled, dysfunctional, it's the same, same kind of thing. So what, what about the body? What, what well, the it, he, just shut, he just shut it down because his, he was so disturbed by the thought, I might, I must, I'm responsible for my son's death, I might be responsible for my son's death. He had, one, he had with his it was beautifully depicted, that, that thought that wasn't it. Was yeah. One moment before and he was totally fine, mm. and then <clears throat> just the suggestion of, could it be yeah. somewhat after you? Oh God. One killer I, guilt thought, and, he, and the Nothing surrogate, else changed, it was just a, no, the surrogate just, it just shut, shut down. Mm. Yeah. Put it on pause, like we did. There he is. See his, see his teeth, his face? That's, that's his face reflecting that thought too. That I might, have killed, might be responsible for killing my son. Pain. This is the equivalent of like what? the Apple store. <laughs> this is the surrogate store. By the dream, surrogate. There's dream five. Yeah, dream, dream five. five. Dream 
<laughs> dream six. Instead of a iPhone, iPhone 6. six plus, this is a dream six model. But see, this is all the commercialization of it. And you see the body in the bikini and the bare chested body and the, the two that are looking like they're ready to kiss and everything. And that's of course using the surrogates to obtain pleasure. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's big business. And, it, and I mean everything in this movie relates to everything that we're learning from the course. It's, it's big commerce. Bodies get used by the ego in big time mm -hmm. commerce. So it's, it's good. Now we get to see the Apple Store version of <laughs> surrogates here. Anyone you want to be. Virtual self. Be what you want. Agents here in Pierce. I'm Victor Welch, VP Corporate Relations. Please sit. Thanks for taking the time to see us. No problem. You uh, instantly know any stuff. I'm the agent superior. Do give him my regards. We're from the legal department. Hope you don't mind if we sit in. Uh -huh. The two of you might be interested in a free software upgrade we're offering all law enforcement officials. Better night vision for your citizens, improved pursuit capability. Any idea how a surrogate's head would explode from the inside? Mr. Welch isn't qualified to answer that question. What did the operator say? Not much. They're dead. If you're trying to imply a link between VSI products and an operator's accidental death... I'm not implying anything. I just want to know how an operator could be killed by signals from a surrogate. The idea itself is absurd. If it were possible, it would defeat the entire purpose of surrogacy. Surrogates have jumped from bridges, been shot, even blown to bits without the least bit of harm to their operators. The fail-safes always kick in. I can assure you, VSI's products have the most stringent safety standards in the industry. What about a human head? What would cause one of them to blow up? Agent Greer, we're not doctors. Honey? I don't know what you are. I mean, for all I know, you could be some big fat dude sitting in a stem chair with his dick hanging out. There's some no private thoughts. Bruce, come on, get to the bottom of all this. Do it. We are fired up for Bruce. You see, he's not going to smolt. He's even talking through his surrogate with force and directness. I don't know what you are well, underneath there, but <laughs> I'm trying to get some answers. She's all inspired by that. Yeah, she's turned on by yeah. her, um, forceful like, direct oh, bruises. Yeah. yeah. Didn't know you can <laughs> right. It's called bold. Yes. <laughs> Check out the identity chip. <laughs> There's an army model. Think, 
the army models don't have as much detail because uh -huh. they're just killing machines, so not being used for pleasure and those kind of things. So they don't need so much detail. They use the iPhone twos for to go out there. <laughs> I'm not going to throw the good it's stuff. So <laughs> they're going to keep the good stuff back for home life, and they're going to send the the cheapy models out there because because they get blown up all the time, and then they have to recondition them. So. That's what he's, but they've even got the little things with the eyes. So he's, he's kind of get, trying to get to the bottom of the whole thing. How did this happen and what's going on? Come back with one. in our community, he's, he's really advanced in all the technology, so he's kind of monitoring things. But he, he kind of, he knows so much about how it all works, that sometimes it drives him kind of crazy. <laughs> but he's aware of everything that's happening, so they're, they need, they put in an APB to catch this guy, and this guy is, you saw the robots that were just watching the different streets, they, they found him pretty much much instantly on the guy that they were looking for. So this guy's going to kind of play a key role in here because it's it's all mechanical and it's all like like uh, all these surrogates and this guy is is not a surrogate. He's kind of he's kind of the wizard behind the machines. So he's going to play an important role for them. Bruce Willis and her, they're, those two characters are surrogates but this guy you know is He's kind of like the guy behind all the machines, and he's kind of aware of how the whole system was set up and and the technology of the whole thing. So it's kind of an interesting character. Andy's arrived. Woo! Andy's back. Did he, did he skype you or something? No, he's right behind you. Oh, Andy! <laughs> I did he skype. Oh, Andy. Sorry. Andy. Uh, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 we pray that you may. We had a prayer 
heard everything oh, for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I'm welcome. sure it was helpful. Yeah, I, I kind of lost the road for a while. The <laughs> slide, you know, <laughs> that wakes you up. But uh, yeah, yeah, I made it. Oh, good, good, good. Ooh. So, so who's going to fill Andy in on everything that oh, I've said in this point? <laughs> so the Andy character is like the surrogate. It's like your mind didn't... Well, what, what's the movie? The surrogate, surrogate oh, yeah, with sorry. Bruce Willis. But we're, we're going deep into the idea of applying it to this situation. So, so that the surrogate Andy went to Salt Lake City where really your mind didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then the surrogate Andy had a snowstorm and lost the road and everything. So we're just, we're, we're going to use this movie uh, because, of, because of all the emotions and things that come up in community and everything and how the temptation is to blame the surrogates when it's in the mind where the, the intensity is. So we're just, we're just kind of getting into it, but we're having, it's just so many nuances it's hardly, you find films where you have so many nuances, but it's, it's, it's very deep. Okay. Let's, we, we said this could take till 3 o'clock and everyone was like, yeah! They're interested in going into this, using this movie. <laughs> We've been going for how long? We're still at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's only like 20 minutes in. We're 20 minutes into the movie and we started at... Yeah, like 26. Minutes. 26 minutes. <laughs> 26 minutes. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. We're, talking an hour. We're going deep with this movie. This is our wake-up call. <laughs> this is a do or die. Do or die. Someone retired. She used to work at his beach house in Maine. Pretty sweet, huh? It's a nice setup you have here. Yeah, we can access every survey on the grid here. <laughs> Touch the button. Look at him scooting. I can tap into anyone's feet. <laughs> it's kind of being inside God's head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. Yeah, I felt that one come on. <sighs> Bobby Saunders, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, you are, aren't you? Can I ask you a question? Hmm. Why no surrogate? Me? Oh, <laughs> they've been trying to pump at me for years. But they built a the machine that can handle this big puppy here. Excuse me, sir. Turn this off the battery in progress and he wants to shut them down immediately. Charlie 4639 or Sierra 7855. Let's see if they have security camera in the hotel. I guess I'll pair one. Warm receipt. Asia Peters, watch this. Boom. Boom. This is like Minority Report. <laughs> it's got this really quick. This guy can do it really fast. So I said he's an interesting character. He just. <laughs> Jeff finally finds the character in the movie that he, can, he identifies with. <laughs> Software. I call it buffering. Let me disconnect anyone from their surrogate. That can't be legal. It's a gray area. They don't ask, we don't tell. It's pretty cool, huh? Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> Relax, we're the good guys. Right? That's what Bruce Willis does. And he's got to go into a zone, you know those, those zones that are surrogate free. They're pro-human zones. Mm -hmm. They don't like machines. Mm -hmm. They're pro-human. And his guy in the motorcycle, he's, he's watching from above there, but he's got, he's got to go and 
find out about this guy and find out what's going on. So, this is a great scene. You know, they always have the great chase scenes and Die Hard and all those things where he goes in. They put one of these in the movie for us too. It's got everything in this movie. But this is just the symbol of, of his determination to get, find some answers. Because why? Because at home he's what? He's sad. He lost his son. His wife is using these surrogates so much that she's, you know, that she's more in love with the surrogates than heart to heart, direct, open communication. And so, for him, this is an important thing because it's all about intimacy, it's all about connection. Isn't that what it's about for everyone? Underneath all these seven billion surrogates on planet Earth, what are they all, what's going on underneath? People want love, they want joy, they want happiness, they want connectedness, and they're trying to use the surrogates to get it. But there has to be another way to let a higher power or something else use the surrogates because it's not working. So this is, this is, and I love, these are these great scenes where you see how determined he is to go find out his next step. kind of determination I want all of you to have in going for the atonement. You lose an arm, you don't stop. He's, so what is, he's a diehard, the helicopter crashed, here he goes, he's going, you gotta love it. This is part of Bruce Willis's legacy. This is metaphysical. <laughs> it's beyond the physical. Get up, Bruce. There he goes. Get up. So he's got half an arm there, you know, so he's obviously <coughs> a surrogate. So now he's not only chasing this guy, but the whole camp hate him because he's a machine. <laughs> so just to give you a context, the whole world may seem to hate you. 
But don't stop. Lose an arm? Keep going. Just for the next step. Just to get together.
Dorchester concluded with an FBI helicopter crash landing inside Boston's Dread Reservation. Residents of the reservation are outraged over what they are calling a gross violation of their territorial sovereignty. Human coalition leader, the Prophet, responded to the incident in a statement made earlier today. They've attacked us, declared war on our way of life, and left us with one option, revolution. We did not throw the first stone, but we will throw the last. <laughs> the humans. Hi. <laughs> to just helpful <laughs> instruments, but he's determined to establish, reconnect intimacy and love and connection. It's too important. Freaks out of the hospital bed. Nothing will hold Bruce back. Okay. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> now he's out in the world of surrogates. There's human in the room. <laughs> too long and you get out <laughs> and you go for a walk in the city and you Salt Lake City. You see his face. He's just it's been it seems like it's been forever. So he feels like he's out in the artificial world. Because he's been in this haven of of his mind or his house. So it's just there's so many parallels. It just goes on and on. Apple copy shop. You know, they try to duplicate Apple. This is their, they make surrogates, but they're, they're they're small. They're lower models than the one he's accustomed to. But she's she sees immediately he needs he needs to have a surrogate. He's not going to do well <laughs> out there as a human. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these are like knockoffs. He's got to find one that 
that he can use, but it's these are like really preliminary models. Android. Android models, yeah. My friend's address shop. This is CP three O. That goes back a way. Oh. <laughs> It's gonna be alright, I'm sure we'll find you something decent. Now we're gonna have you back on your feet in a sec. Think <laughs> looks good? Just flying well the signal, right? Feels numb. It's only a face smile. It's a vision inherent. You want other senses, they're extra. Of course, you'd like to see in your own face when you look in the mirror. No problem. Scan your head, cast the thermoplastic, and you're good to go in less than an hour. Hey, no charge on the improvements. I'm sure you wouldn't mind taking yourself back five, ten years, huh? You think of that? Hmm? I think we're done here. Profit for a minute. You don't ever tell you else, but no. What do you think? Okay, I'll offer something. 
And there's no joke sketch in here. Can I talk to you about Ma Strickland, please? <laughs> different when you actually feel the pain, isn't it? What happened to Strickland? Was he a friend of yours? He had a weapon. A very dangerous weapon. My people will do anything to get this back. <laughs> well, if I happen to come across such a weapon, I promise to have it delivered to your door. Show him to the gates. Gently. Prophet's talking all about letting go of surrogates and this and this, but it's that sacrifice, sacrifice idea. It's almost like the Christian faith is like sacrifice, sacrifice, you know, it's always talking about Jesus, but there's always sacrifice mixed in. This guy's talking about freedom and restoring things to the way it was and everything, but the sacrifice, uh, if you listen carefully to the rhetoric, you can see it's, it's all mixed in, so now He's obviously lying about the weapon and everything, so it starts, you start to get a sense of how all, everything in this whole surrogate world is, is just a bunch of lies. He's saying there's a, you're living a lie, which that is what this whole world, this world and that world seems to be, but there has to be, it has to go much, much deeper, because it's definitely not about sacrificing anything. So, just, you know, we'll go on and see where it goes from here. He's coming home to this now, so he's got his purpose, but his wife is not exactly focused on the intimacy and the connection. <laughs> Do you 
Do not be equally yoked with unbelievers. <laughs> That's from the Bible. <laughs> We can pause it here. See, the problem is not the conflict with the bodies, it's these, the other bodies that are underneath the, sh the shades. is symbolizing private minds and private thoughts. It's the mind that feels so isolated. It's the mind that feels so trapped. It's the mind that believes in the ego, that believes it's private minds, private thoughts. Kind of like in the Matrix, the first Matrix movie where they, where they, go underneath and there's this rows, almost like high-rises of, of little toilets that are <laughs> containing <laughs> these bodies, you know, this, the bodies in here are under the little eye shades, but they're all in their own little apartments and houses using the surrogates, just like those bodies are being used like as batteries, as energy to fuel the matrix, everything that's going on, and when he goes, when Neo goes underneath, he finds it. So, this is kind of interesting. Here's the image that was made looking back on, on the one who's kind of 
in her room and you know people get mesmerized just sitting in, on their couch and eating and watching TV. It's the same kind of thing. Now the surrogates, the images are they're trying to live vicariously through the images but there's no connection. But I like that scene right there because it's kind of showing her, it's just symbolizing the mind is believing it's private and separate and lonely and missing the love and missing the, the connection. And then the surrogates are just an attempt to find intimacy through external means. They're literally inventions and there's no, it's frustrating. And that's what that last scene was about with Bruce Willis. He's just, he's desperate for love and connection. But it's, he's not finding it. And he's not seeing any way, at this point in the movie, he's not finding any way to get back to that connection that he wants. Okay, here we go. Keep going. Eugene Greer? Is that is that you? Yeah. You you look terrible. Thanks. You too. That's Bruce Willis's partner, partner's user. She's just been shot. They want to take oh, over. They want to take over Bruce Willis's partner's surrogate, <coughs> and so they're taking out the user with the plan to take over that. It's another misguided use of the body. <laughs> misguided use of the surrogate. Peters, what are you doing? I 
Just a background check on VSI. Structural stuff. Those are internal financial records. Talk to Jenkins and Corporate. Six four. Don't forget to keep us. Okay, honey. Thank you so Yeah. Bags. Oh. Hi, Tom. Who's that? Smile muscles need to set. Hey. Hi. Sorry about last night. I'm at work, Tom. I didn't come here to argue. Good. Christopher Walken, but it's Glenn Close who's behind the woman behind the man who's pulling all the strings in that one. But this is <coughs> that's why it's you, appearances deceive, not <laughs> it's just as you keep going on. So there he was, another. But there is some kind of entity that's that's behind it. So he's Bruce is going to try to to get to the core. The inventor. 
I couldn't figure out why the cops let her come out. So I started going through the payroll records. You won't believe this. For the past 16 months... Working for us. That's right. Which means Stowe's got to be dirty. Looks like he hired Strickland to kill Cantor. So we, we remember now that that's, that's not his partner. Mm. Some, so it, see how the appearance is deceived. He thinks he's, by all appearances on the surface, he's working with his partner, but there's a different user now. And think of that, you know, in your mind, you know, when the ego takes over and the fear and the hurt and the guilt and the anger come in there, it's a different user mm -hmm. of your surrogate. And that's why we have to forgive, we have to get to the core of this user, this ego user, because there's no other way out of it. The, the, the surrogates won't change. You've had, we've all had those experiences. Remember that song that Billy Joel did, The Stranger? No. That's way back. <laughs> <laughs> but once I used to believe I was such a great romancer, then I came home to a woman that I could not recognize. When I pressed her for a reason, she refused to even answer. It was then I felt the stranger kick me right between the eyes. You know, it's talking about when that ego user comes in. We've all seen it in different situations and relationships where it's like, wait a minute, what happened? I don't know you. Or even with yourself, yeah. like, oh, I'm not myself, yeah. I'm not in my right mind, if I'm not, and so it's, this, this is really getting at things, and, and, and Bruce Willis it basically thinks he's still working with his partner, but he's not, so it's, you know, it's like, a, you have to rely on intuition and go all the way with the goal, because even the partners right with you can sometimes, you know, seem to be operating up from another purpose. But it's your purpose to find the pure purpose. Mm -hmm. And then it changes the use of all the surrogates when you find that. But until you find the pure purpose, then the surrogates will act out the split mm -hmm. in the mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll be acting from spirit and sometimes from ego. But you see how that's the whole point of the purification. Mm -hmm. So it's very profound when you start to transfer this movie. Okay, we we'll keep <laughs> keep moving. See Bruce is see if he discovers who he's working with. Um, Doc, you're on leave. Well, yeah, I am. Actually, I'm um, just suspended pending for the investigation. I'm just clearing my desk out. Yeah. You should be home, recuperating. Okay, not walking around here in the flesh. I was home, and I came here to clean out my desk, and you know, before the medication kicks in, hopefully. I can find a box and, oh, Victor Welch wanted me to say hello. I'm sorry? Victor Welch, BSI, good looking kid, very excited, you're coming over there, finally we went into the private sector, you must be excited. Why don't you come to my office, you know, I'm looking too sharp. Yeah, I am, but it's, you know, what is he talking about? for you, it's a really good group. He knows this guy's yeah. secret? Shame, shame, shame. Yeah, he... He knows this guy's a bit shady and he wants to get in there and so he's saying a few things so the guy will seem a little bit guilty but he basically, he's oh, okay. going in to investigate. He knows there's some, some things, he's not sure who's behind it, who's the, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. But he's going to try to get to the bottom of it. So he's, this guy's on his suspicious list. Let's see what he does with him. Over there, smart, talented, great legal department, great working environment. And you gotta be happy with those first year stock options, huh? What are you talking about? Well, it's true. They got a shit. The guy you hired to kill Cannon. Tom, you got it all wrong. You gave him the weapon. BSI Mexico. They give one to you, 
you give it to Strickland so he can go out and kill Cantor. The only problem is he killed his son by mistake. Something is wrong with you. Why are you doing this? Is it money? Is that what it is? You need help. spiritual journey, you just keep getting your legs knocked out from under you. You think you're working with somebody, a mighty companion, boom! Right out from under you. Until you get to the base of the ego, anything can shift at any time. He's driving along, he's thinking, he got this flash drive, he's on his way and everything, and now she's, there's an agent, I found Agent Greer, he's in an accident, boom. It's like self-sabotage and everything. So, so now, he's getting the idea that that this one who just did that, that she's got something to do with the weapon, or getting the weapon that he's been trying to come upon. So, here we go. It's, I love this, like a hundred plot twists. <laughs> That's the way the spiritual journey is, too. <laughs> go, Bruce, go! Don't stop! <laughs>
shut down. Agent Peters has been hijacked. You got this connector. Bobby. Hello, Bobby. <laughs> Peters. Are you going to say Why don't you put the gun down? Huh? What are you trying to prove? She's in the command module. She's down at the core. Maggie, get offline right away as soon as you get this message. Something's going to happen to the surrogate. She only speak to you, sir. Why don't you just move in and take her back from She has a human hostage. Oh, that's slop. Saunders.
Christ to finally meet you in the flesh. Now, lie on the floor face down. It's a little different when you have to kill somebody with your own hands. When you have to squeeze the trigger, you don't have a machine to do your dirty work. Feel that? The accelerated pulse, the heightened awareness, savoring each breath as if it were your last. That's what you've been missing. That's what everybody's been missing. So you killed millions of people? I changed the course of human history when I invented surrogates. Now I'm going to change it back. You can't change what's been done. You and I know that better than most people. My son's death will not have been in vain. Now it heals mankind. Heals mankind? That's what you want to do? You want to kill everyone? And that's going to heal mankind? They're already dead. They died the minute they plugged into those machines. This is not the solution. That's the way it that's is. That's not the way it is. I had a vision. I was going to empower the powerless to enable others like me to walk, to feel, to live a normal life. Listen to me! They're going to call you a murderer! That's what you're doing! Surrogacy is a perversion. It's an addiction. And you have to kill the addict to kill the addiction. Upload complete. You're too late. What I've done can't be stopped. Now you're going to be a witness for the rebirth of humanity. That's my gift to you. No! No! <laughs> Selecting all surrogates. How do we make it stop? Tommy's Greer. Tom Greer. How do we shut this thing down? Full gas base collected. Jesus. Listen, that thing has just uploaded a virus into the system that's going to kill anyone who's using a surrogate. Sorry, Scotty. Bobby, we need to unplug everyone. Now. Think! Yeah. Uh. Okay, move over to the general's left. Type your password red 253. We can't unplug it, but maybe we can uh, buffer the operators. Oh god, okay, we got 10 seconds. Okay, look, there are three buses. Type in Tango in the first, X-ray in the second, 772 in the third, and enter. Ready to buzz. Okay, you see what's happening here? Get ready to pause. Go a little further. Okay, now, they just saved all the humans with yeah. what he just did. Now, he's trying to save all the surrogates. Yeah. And now Bruce Willis has to make a choice. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone has to make a choice. This is like, will you try to preserve the surrogates? Or, or do you actually come to a point where you see in mind, in unified mind, the trick of all the surrogates. You see, he's trying to go after it, and he just saved all the billions of people, but, you know, now it's like, it's so cool, because Bruce Willis has, he's searching for intimacy and connection, and so he's going to have to make a decision <laughs> in a very short period of time. Are the surrogates helping or not? Mm. Isn't that an interesting twist of this movie? Do I continue to believe what my eyes are projecting, the world of projection, or do I go within? 
to let go of the projection entirely. That's, that's the decision that we're facing. So this movie is going right at the atonement. So let's just watch, Here, here's the guy, there's, his, there's our Jeff character, he's telling him how to do what he needs to do, but, but basically Bruce Willis has to decide, you know, is it worth it or not? So, that's fantastic. Here we go. <laughs> that's quite a decision. So that's it? Everyone's safe? What? All the people? Yes, yes, of course, yes. All the operators are safe. But if you press the board, all the surveys are going to be destroyed. We don't have a lot of time, man. Hit yes. Hi. Hello. Hit yes, Greer. Greer, I'm talking to all the surrogates. He's been waiting for this moment. He has to really now get inside about what is valuable. You know, we, Lisa and I were talking on this show today about you have to be friendly, but without needing friends. Ooh. Mm. That's an interesting choice. So he's, he's deciding about whether it's, whether it's the users are important or whether they need the surrogates. Because remember, the guy who invented them was just saying, uh, they're, they're dead already. Right. They're misused. Yeah. They're misusing yeah. the surrogates. So that's what he's doing right now. It's her face and it's Bruce Willis. He's really got to make a decision. So that's where we're going here. There he goes! He's taking out the surrogates. <laughs> Big moment. That's taking out a defense mechanism yeah. <laughs> in one shot. <laughs> what is truth? What is real? And she's out now, so where's the first place he's gonna go? Boom. <laughs> That's like the a, the that's a step in the right direction yeah. in, in the sense of giving up defense mechanisms. If you've been mis if you've made something and you're misusing it, that you want to stop misusing it. It's still, it, the world will end in laughter, so you have to see the, the humor in all this, like I did in this heaven. But now, he's still, it's so interesting what he'll do next is he's, he's going for the mind connection, right? That's what he wanted always. His wife, everybody was so distracted, and now he's, he's going for a connection, heart to heart, mm. mind to mind. What's the name of your show? I don't know. Awake, Awake in the Heart. heart. <laughs> Awake in the Heart. This is it. Awake in the Heart. Okay, let's root him on. Go, Bruce, go. You got go, ready of the go. seven Amen. billion surrogates. Let's get to the heart of it. Get at her. <laughs> Go for her. Go to her. Holy relationship. Go for it. 
Substitutions are gone. Symbolic. The one human is not using surrogate. He's <laughs> the one left. Okay. Here they come. They're all in their pajamas. They're in their pajamas, yeah. of course. <laughs> Living Miracles Virtual. This is our commercial. Yeah, there it is. Come on, get it, get it. those robes on and get ready. Oh, I'll let you go to Now finally they can have an expression session. Their first expression session. Mind to mind. to the point. Yeah, I almost Adopt some of this language into our sessions about <laughs> That's your surrogate speaking. Mm. I want to know what you feel. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 it could, I don't want to talk to your surrogate. I don't want to talk to your surrogate. Talk to you. I want to talk to you. Okay. That's what he kept saying. He, he talked through the surrogate. I want I want you. Yeah. Can you just lay down the surrogate yeah. for one, one moment? Second. <laughs> Can you lay down the surrogate for one moment? Your surrogate has taken over. <laughs> I'm here to remind you. That's right. You should be 
we check out your user? <laughs> I want to get in touch with the user. Get in touch with the user. Can we have a heart to heart talk instead of a surrogate to surrogate talk? Amen. <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> That's cool. That's that really, is cool. Yeah. It gives us a new perspective on things, the languaging too. Is it like, if you look at the news or newspapers, it's all about outcomes, what happened, what happened. But really, what happened is nothing. Right. It's the purpose. Mm. It's the purpose for everything. Because situations don't really exist, people don't really exist, time intervals don't exist. Remember, everything in linear time is a construct to keep the user from coming back into the true identity. Mm -hmm. For the user seeing that it's a dreamer, mm -hmm. that's the key. And then, then beyond dreaming is waking. Mm -hmm. Awake, awake in the heart. But, but awareness of dreaming comes first. You can't wake up until you start to realize you're not the surrogate, you're the user. And then beyond that, who who is, use, who is the doing the using? Is it the Holy Spirit or the ego that's using? That's the central question. So it keeps, it keeps the air keeps getting projected to form. You know, like even in terms of the world, you know, teaching, they talk about teachers. Well, teaching really isn't done by persons. It's the mind that's teaching. It really comes back to what, what purpose is my mind embracing? Which teacher am I following? The teacher of God or the teacher of the <coughs> ego? The Holy Spirit or, or the imposter? That's the question. Even Shakespeare said, to be or not to be, that is the question. It had nothing to do with to act or not act, or what right actions versus wrong actions. It was to be or not to be, that is the question. So, ultimately you start to realize that you can't assume anything from form. You can't be informed by form. If the world is appearances, you can never really trust the appearances, or you can never really gain an awareness of who you are from the appearances, but just by seeing the falsity of the appearances. So the only question that ever needs to be asked is, what is it for? That's why way back in 1990, whatever it was, three, when we had that dialogue and we did that little tiny pamphlet, Purpose is the only choice. That's it. It's, I met somebody the other day and they said they go back and they just carry that little mm -hmm. book, Purpose is the only choice. Oh, it was Sandy, our friend from Hungary. She just carries around, Purpose is the only choice. She's on a hermitage now with Nicolene, and, she, and she's just holding on to that, because it's like, that's the only question that needs to be asked. So you see, as you go through the day, you, the setting the goal section, which is what I just read this morning, that's the most important thing, is when you wake up, you have to set the goal, yeah. and trust that everything, every encounter, every yeah. one you meet will play their part perfectly, if you have the correct purpose set out in front, then everyone will play their part. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the purpose out front, like a torch, then you will question and doubt everyone. Why'd you say this? Why'd you do this? Why'd you mm -hmm. miss this? Or, you know, that's, you can see the expression sessions, the anger that's coming up is because it's this, I believe that somebody didn't play their part. Somebody didn't play their part perfectly, but it really comes down to the purpose wasn't out front. Because if the ego is out front, then everything just seems to happen, and then, then the ego decides whether it likes it, or it doesn't like it. Like, dislike. It's back to duality. It, it knows nothing. It makes a fragmented world and it's just picking little scraps. Do I like it? Do I dislike it? You know, you see that's, 
That's what it's doing all day long. It's just searching around, do I like it? Do, do. But it has no idea of purpose. But when the purpose is out front, then that's where there's innocence. That's where no one's ever said anything wrong, done anything wrong. No one's been victimized, no one's been mistreated. You know, it's like, it's like in the end when all that, all the surrogates get wiped out. All the blame game, all the defenses get wiped out by this brand new purpose, this new shift of purpose for the whole world. So there's no way to act your way out of this. You know, you can't even become a good person and make it out. Because a good person would be just another mm -hmm. surrogate. It's the opposite of bad, it's the world of opposites. Bad person, good person. Good guys, bad guys. Heroes, villains. You see, it's all part of a projection of wanting to hold on to the ego and then seeing it acted out as if the conflict is out on the screen and it's not. It's amazing when you think about it. It's like the key to eternity of waking up in the morning and just going, okay Lord, today I would put your purpose out in front. Mm -hmm. What would that mean in a practical way? Well imagine you get up tomorrow morning and you even before your eyes open up, you just are there and quiet and you think, today I'm going to hold the torch of peace of mind in front of me. I'm going to want peace so much and I'm going to trust that everyone's going to play their part <laughs> perfectly because my mind's that powerful. If I want peace, I'm not going to try to pull any sh scraps and shreds out of my day and try to figure them out. I'm going to say that everyone, every smile is, is perfect, every frown is perfect. Mm -hmm. Every seemingly thing that people do right and things that they do wrong are all perfect. Why? Because my goal is peace. Mm -hmm. And if my goal is peace, I will interpret everything and everyone as fulfilling their part perfectly to bring me that peace. I won't egoically break it off. What the ego does is it breaks the world into situations and then it tries to deal with things apart from seeing everything as a whole. So you can say, oh, I've got a pretty good life now, I'm living in Camas and, and hmm, it's pretty good, occasionally some rough spots here and there, but, but, I, but Jesus has those workbook lessons, you know, think of one brother you think has harmed you. Someone who you don't feel you know, the love for, someone you have a grievance for. You have thought of him now. What's that but trying to pull that brother, that sister apart from the whole? And going, yeah, yeah, I'll never forget this thing or that thing. It's always trying to pull the whole apart and, and try to solve this empty, lacking feeling from some, something wrong has gone wrong on, on the set, something's gone wrong in, among the surrogates. So that's quite amazing to think that you can practice setting the goal every day and not be deterred from your goal. Because your mind is that powerful, you, you cannot be deterred. And there's a whole section at the end of the text Setting the goals more in the middle of the text, 17. At the, toward, toward the end of the text, there's a whole section called S Rules for Decision. Decide the kind of day that you want. A peaceful day, a happy day, a joyful day, a free day. And then, say to yourself, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. He's, he not only tells you to set the goal, but then he's got a whole section in there saying, and here's how you do it. You're, I'm going to tell you, just do this and practice this. Set your goal. Say to yourself, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. And then you've got it. And it's easier to follow the first two than it is to get back 
If you make a decision by yourself, you go against God and the whole universe. By one ego decision, you try to go against God and the entire universe. And then he's got steps three, four, five, you know, six. It's harder, he says, it's harder to get back than to stay with that. And isn't that the same with, does anybody remember all the Ten Commandments? All ten of them? But can you remember the first two? Love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, and might. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You see, it's much easier. One and two are always easier. Rules for decision, Ten Commandments, whatever. If, you, if you've got it, and you apply it, and you put it out in front, you're way ahead. You're almost home free to eternity. But once you fall into this sleep, where you think, where your first thought is, Oh God, I gotta get out of bed. That's not a good start <laughs> to the day. Oh God, a dance party. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, you, you have to have the goal out front. Because that, that will determine how you experience the day. That's how you will experience the world, it depends on that goal. And so in the end, every decision is for truth or illusions. Every single decision, not consciously, but deep in the mind, at the core, everything, the mind is either deciding for truth or illusion. And in the end, heaven is a decision I must make. That's a workbook decision. That you've got to go into the Death Star that is your mind, with the force, <laughs> and you've got to zoom inside the giant Death Star, and you've got to get down to make a direct hit on core. the core. On the, that's the yes and no that was on <laughs> there, you know, it's the same decision. And that's the only thing that you're responsible for in this, in this whole experience, is, is choosing the correction. Making the direct hit <laughs> on the power plant and choosing the atonement. So that's amazing to think that of everything that seems to be a human life, that's what it is. And Lisa almost exited because she was falling asleep, but I said, stay for five more minutes. <laughs> We're going to get to the, what's the, awake, awake in the heart. <laughs> we had to come back for the, awake in the heart. It's so glorious. Yeah. Thank you for your trust and your oh, thank you. willingness. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's so fun to find movies that reflect what we're really going for, you know, that, that show the dynamics. I mean, it'd be quite an actual adventure, but when you have the teachings of the Course underneath it, it just gets lifted up. Mm -hmm as this amazing parable of awakening, instead of just a good Bruce Willis <laughs> action adventure movie. You know, it's like, whoa, that's big. That's, that's practical. That's what I was praying for today. That is the answer to my prayer. Hallelujah. You know, it's, yeah, it's, we deserve happiness. Yeah, because it's that self-betrayal that I'm always terrified of, that's that thought, like, but it's of a machine. <laughs> so, unplug from it. Yeah. You just have to watch the remote operator. Oh, what? The remote operator. That's what I took away from that. Mm -hmm. That's the ego, is the remote yeah. operator, and that's in charge. Yeah. To make that decision not to allow that to happen. To say no. Yeah, that reminds me so much of that line at the end of Solaris, where Chris Cohen says, Am I dead? Am I alive? And Rhea says, We don't have to think like that anymore. That's, that's taking it off of the surrogates, you know. Is my, is my surrogate dead or alive? We don't have to think like that anymore. Like, life and death are not of the body. Let's not keep having this conversation. You know, is what she was saying, like, let's live in love. And then they kiss, 
at the end, you know, that was a symbol of the love. No more conflict, no more figuring, trying to figure that craziness out. Though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death shall have no dominion. Boom! <laughs> that's uh, Dylan Thomas, that's your, that's the whole poem underneath Solaris, you know, like I always used to say, that's the one movie you gotta see, this year, you're on a desert island, you can <laughs> see one movie, instead of your last phone call, one last movie, though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death so I have no dominion. That's... Hallelujah. Thank God. Yeah, Christians might have viewed that final scene as like Armageddon. Mm -hmm. But, it's the question is, is when, when there's death and destruction, is, is it real? <laughs> is that's the real question, you know. It's such a fear of Armageddon. But what does Armageddon of illusions mean? <laughs> right, it's release. Yeah, it's like release of what was believed to be real, interpreted by the ego, is Armageddon, that, you know, the ego would interpret that scene where they all go down as yeah. like, there it is, yeah. it's there it is, death and destruction, but it's not from the higher perspective, it's not at all. People always ask that, they said, how do you forgive a nuclear explosion? We've already done that, and next, yeah. We saw a hypothetical nuclear explosion in Los Angeles. It leveled Los Angeles, but there's a way of looking at that that forgives the world, that sees the false as false. That's deep. People will say, what about Hitler? Hitler? Oh, come on. Is that the best you can throw? <laughs> about the whole cosmos, not six million Jews in a, in a furnace, you know, it's, this is deep stuff. Okay, well we wanted a movie where we would walk out and go, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's a winner. <laughs> go Bruce, go! Take us in. You guys can call the speaker Armageddon of Illusions. <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be amazing. That's a good title. It's like... Come along on a journey. You should do that movie on a virtual gathering. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. You know that we could end up having like, we did have that Strawberry Music Festival and Enlightenment <laughs> thing, but we could end up doing like a whole virtual retreat, mm -hmm. where we just keep it, Spirit brings it home with one yes. virtual movie after another, right. another. Yes. 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 yes, I've been saying virtual movie festival for Vir years. Yes, yeah. virtual movie years. festival. <laughs> What's the one that we like that is so extreme that we watched, where the the guy that plays in it? What's his name? He's like going around and he's trying to fight his way out of it. Um, starts, Edge of Tomorrow starts with an S, or yeah. And he's he's going around and tries to fight. He's like it's like a video of a lot of oh, oh, oh the oh, gamer gamer the gamer. gamer. The yeah. gamer. So oh. this would. This yeah, would make yeah, it in yeah, there, yeah. gamer. There's, there's Let's certain, watch like all the virtual movies. There, there's certain ones that just bring your mind into that. Tron, Tron, Tron. That's so beautiful. Yeah, brings it all back. Exit, that one. Existence. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Existence. Yeah, there was that existence moment here with that with that black engineer where he was like like this, and they had to talk to him a bit, and then oh yeah, that's right. It was an existence moment, right? He wasn't bobbling his head; he was just not moving. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's existence, and but you could those kind of movies. If you imagine just is in teaching of setting it up, everybody participating and setting it up in your own way with the, your own insights with movies, the things that really leap for you, that really this, and then it's a big collaboration of coming together and a big invitation to say, come and join us. Mm -hmm. This is first this is, ever virtual movie enlightenment festival. A festival. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. We can How do about it? it. We can do it. Rock the world. Well, yeah. a global event because it will invite people from all over the world. It's going to be global, so it's like yeah. we're you honing our skills. No we're honing our awakening. Our Zoom skills. There you go. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. There's your epicenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's it. Hmm. Then we can start off the thirteenth floor. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, that's a great. Oh, yes. That's a classic. Yeah, maybe once. that's another one we watch yeah, yeah. over the Christmas yeah, holiday. Maybe. Let's, We're I've waiting. Only seen it once. <laughs> we'll ease our way into our Let's virtual <laughs> epic center. I've never seen the circuit before. I have. It's I the first time I've seen you. it. Me too. Yeah, Isn't that amazing? It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You saw. This is your first time. I well, I'd seen one. Well, it's my first time actually seeing it. Actually. I've seen it, uh, I think when it first came out, it mm. uh, was home, but yeah, I just, this is so new. <laughs> this is the first time I saw it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd actually been thinking about this movie for a while, because I kept getting this image of, I think of you and Salida both sitting on these chairs going like this after watching the movie Surrogates maybe a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I would love to see surrogates like with everyone here. Just yeah. came, the uh, image just came to my mind like yesterday or something. There it is, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. We were thinking snow and Christmas, and he was like, like no. <laughs> it's not what I have. It. I have this <laughs> image in mind, right? Touchdown. <laughs> just like you said the other day, was Family Stone. Oh. Yeah, Family Stone. That had healing ripples yeah. all over the place. You were thinking of the movie, Sarah got thought of the yeah. title, and then boom, and now it's on Spreaker, and Jenny and Greg have had healings around it, and all oh. kinds of, it just eased and rippled yeah. out. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. Family yeah. Stone. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh. Around the world. Oh. Epicenter. Around the world. Epicenter. 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 Center. Those are good reflections. You have a thought. You thought of the movie, she thought of the title, and boom! She just said there's a death guy in it. There's a death guy in it. The reason I hadn't been thinking about it, I couldn't talk about it because I didn't know what the movie was called. Yes, yes. There it is. Miracles at the center. We're praying and it's coming in big mushroom clouds of awakening. You're going, boom! There's a death guy in it. Boom! It's fun. We we need each other for that. Everyone's playing their part just perfectly, so we can boom. Oh, we gotta do the thirty-three. We we you guys haven't seen thirty-three yet. Haven't seen it. No. Oh, we have that. The huh? We have yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one too. Cloud Atlas too. Cloud I've seen half of it. Huh? huh? So, that was a movie. Like, it's like, it's that movie shook me without me knowing it shook me. <laughs> I, felt, I felt the ripple effects later. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember with the Cloud Atlas, when it came out to the theater, Francis was here having just one of those days where we, we were going around. She just kept saying to me over and over, I don't know who I am, I don't know who I am. Don't know who I am, and it just went on for some time, maybe some hours. And she said, "I don't know who I am," and she was very frustrated. And I said, "Let's go see a movie, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll see the answer in the movie." And then we went to see Cloud Atlas, and then at the very end of the movie, yeah, you know, she just she just burst into tears and just cried and cried and cried and cried, and, cried and I just held her, and it was. That was the whole answer. Because she had to let go of the question. 
<laughs> and that movie really helps you to try, mm -hmm. try to follow. Yeah, you, this one, you, this one, yeah, well, you can't. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, you can't follow. It. Yeah. It's the one, the whole, like all the actors played different roles. And some yes. guys were women, the women were guys. It yeah. was perfect. Yeah. And the good guys were the yeah. bad guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, the doctor was, was actually yeah. trying to kill him. It's like, Whoa. You could do, that could be a whole other theme for a virtual retreat where you take movies with lots of what seemingly reincarnational or mm -hmm. those kind of themes. Mm. Kind of like Mr. Nobody did, but there's another one that's a little more linear that's called Orlando. Has anybody yeah. ever seen Orlando? Yeah, that's really good too. That was really good. Mm -hmm. You could kind of start off with Orlando mm -hmm. and then work your way in towards Cloud Atlas and then maybe Mr. Nobody. <laughs> what was the one? What was the one where the guy um, uh, befriended the basketball? Oh, oh, uh, Castaway. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a volleyball. It's a volleyball. <laughs> it's a volleyball. <laughs> See, that's how it works. You need Chris to. The <laughs> It was a volleyball. She was able to come quickly with Castaway and bypass the volleyball, but starts off with, this is the guy with the basketball. It's a basketball. We need each other. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Wilson. Wilson. I mean, that, that scene alone actually is a great example of the surrogacy. Like, it's a, it's a basketball or volleyball, and it's been his friend, it's been his companion, yeah. you know, it's... Being all projected onto it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you projected everything onto it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, mm, good ideas. Oh, yeah. Orlando. Orlando. Oh, oh God. Yeah. That blew. I was thinking about that actually during the I saw that at a community out in Denver. Uh -huh. in about it's called Orlando, 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 like it's Orlando. Orlando, Florida. Yeah. 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 The same. Yeah. Tilda okay. Swinton plays. The male and the female characters, and the best part of the movie is, as you're going through it, she's playing a man in different centuries, and it's all going, 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 going. And at one point, she just turns and stares right into the camera with this look that is like, like it's. Do you, can you believe any of this? Like, it just is an enlightenment look. Yeah. When, okay. When the and there's an angel singing in the clouds. Yeah. When the main character looks. And, and Henry Jaglin was done that when he yeah. he did that movie, um, and it's and it's I think yeah. Oh, wow. He says, "What if this is a movie? They're having they're having a, a meal. What if this is a movie and I make I'm making a movie and you're all actors? What if the camera is right over there in the corner, and then the music goes up and they all look in the camera the same kind of moment? These yeah. amazing filmmakers just are going to insert the holy instant." into their film, without a sound. Both of them, Jaglin did it, and then they did it in the middle of Orlando. That makes the whole movie, when this character, male, female, male, female, and then just gives you this look, like, mm. like this, this is, this is for you. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's really... Like you're watching something, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you think you're watching a movie? <laughs> oh no. When you talked earlier about that, that, you know, adjusting your set and there, all that stuff comes on, the Rod Serling thing came up, you know, do not adjust your set. Yeah. You have entered the twi twilight zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it all lifted. <laughs> got really intense there for a while and then I just was praying and I, I just could feel like the the one I was speaking to could hear me and, and just everything you said was so helpful. Thank you. It popped. Yeah, nothing to grieve. I love when you get animated like that. It's just fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> Everyone joins me. Go, Bruce! Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. The world forgiven with Bruce Willis. <laughs>